Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are reviewing All of Us Strangers, directed by Andrew Hayes, starring Andrew Scott, Paul Mescal, Jamie Bell and Claire Foy. The film is effectively a commentary and a study of grief, the way it manifests, the way we try to avoid it, the ways we cope with it. And the film is all about Andrew Scott's character and his struggles with life and relationships, be they personal, familial, social or professional. The film is very clearly a drama, but the ways in which the film explores that dramatic narrative shapeshifts from being romantic, plainly dramatic, at times supernatural, at times thriller, which all amalgamate into this very arty, very clever and very niche form of storytelling. It's a very intimate film dealing with very universal themes and it's also the type of film that leaves you feeling very emotionally numb, very hollowed out and very existential and thought-provoked. There's basically four characters and the film really needs to lean into that cast to bring to the surface these feelings and these repressed emotions that need to get addressed. Andrew Scott is absolutely the highlight of the film. How he's not been nominated for an Oscar this year is kind of baffling to me. His ability to capture raw emotion, to feel so spontaneous and so reactionary, you really just get the sense that he is so present in each scene, so involved and invested in the characters he's bouncing off. His performance absolutely carries this film. The film is all about this introvert not necessarily becoming extroverted, but becoming more self-assured and self-confident through these relationships with family and with this sexual partner. Paul Mescal provides a really kind of ambiguous, unsettling, but charming presence in the film, a real kind of contrast and juxtaposition to Andrew Scott's character, which makes their relationship feel very interesting, very dynamic, not necessarily healthy completely, but also desperately necessary from the point of view of the two characters they feel like they're thrown together and kind of need each other. I think the emotional value and the emotional anchor of the film come in the form of Claire Foy and Jamie Bell, who provide this kind of spectral presence, this manifestation, this anthropomorphized version of the past reincarnate. We're never told whether their presence is something ghostly, something hallucinogenic and to do with Andrew Scott's character's mental health. There is no narrative explanation for their presence. You are just expected to go along with the ride and that works. It really does give the film an elusive, transient feeling. It's very much a combination of moments that can't be latched onto. I think the real engagement in those performances come from the fact that they're younger than Andrew Scott's character, despite being his parents at that time. And there's a lot of comedy and reciprocation and just emotional evolution for all three characters during those reunions. Claire Foy and Jamie Bell are so understated, they're very subtle but very, very expressive. The film's most emotional moments come with them and they absolutely would not have landed without the sheer kind of acting ability that they managed to bring to the screen. The cinematography and the editing of this film is also fantastic. There's so many shots that rely on reflections from mirrors or windows. These slightly transparent spectral silhouettes, these distant figures in the in the background. The film is really rife with that sort of imagery, not just in dealing with these kind of parents who could be ghosts, could not be sort of thing, but also just in everyday life to really present Andrew Scott's character as someone who is removed, who is disconnected, disengaged, not an entirely opaque figure, you know, a faint recollection on the glass. Addressing these notions of irrelevance and transience and impermanence. The film felt like it was hitting every note perfectly for me until the ending, when something happens in the plot that feels like it slightly regresses from the emotional journey we've been on. The ending reminded me that I was watching a film. It felt like it was subsiding into narrative trope and the need to provide some narrative twist and turn to lend weight to the ending. And I think the film would have been much more powerful had it just committed to the naturalistic journey and the evolution of these characters. And also for me, there were a couple of moments where I think the catharsis of an emotional moment was cut short by the scene being cut short. There was only one scene for me that was really starting to get me teary-eyed, but I didn't feel like I got to live in that scene for long enough to really invoke that emotion in me because it cut short and went on to the next scene. I wouldn't say I felt emotionally ripped apart by the narrative because it didn't seem to want to commit to that sensation. This kind of blue filter that overhangs the film, it hangs with these blue hues and this slightly cold, desaturated look. And I think that really lends to this emptiness and this haunting void that I think overhangs the entire narrative and the character. So I think visually the film is an absolute treat. 
it's really arty but really expressive and evocative and thought-provoking as well. And while the emotion is absolutely there with the characters, the writing is never stagey or overly sentimental, it feels natural, it feels humanistic, and it feels like we're exploring these relationships in a very, very natural way. It is ultimately the fact that the scenes and the narrative resolution doesn't fully embrace the humanity and the emotional rawness of what I thought they would be doing. So it subverted my expectations, not in a good way in my honest opinion, but I would be intrigued to know what you guys think, so if you have seen it, drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Please also consider liking and subscribing to the channel guys, that's always a huge help, and in the meantime we'll see you for the next vid.